So how many virtual meetings have you attended that you would say were truly effective? And how many would you say were less than effective, if not downright terrible? You know what I mean. Everyone is in on the meeting, but cameras are turned off because everyone's multitasking, doing email on the side, and not really paying attention, bored to death as someone drones on and on, and no one can really participate because of the limitations of the virtual platform. Or maybe you're the one speaking, wondering whether anyone's actually really listening or paying attention or picking up on what you're trying to say. We love to complain about all the virtual meetings we're doing these days, but one thing is certain, virtual meetings are here to stay. In any meeting, especially in virtual meetings, a facilitator can help the meeting be more engaging, interactive, and overall more effective. Hi, I'm John Reardon. For the past 20 years, I've been facilitating productive meetings for hundreds of clients, combining a clear objective with an efficient and engaging process to get great results. I've developed this course on the fundamentals of virtual facilitation with a fantastic colleague, Monica Tuckrar, who's been facilitating effective meetings herself for many years. A facilitator helps a team set an agenda, prepare for the meeting, guides the meeting content and process to support engagement, and ensures that useful summary notes and action items are captured and distributed in a timely fashion. In this course, we're offering basic skills and techniques for those who want to facilitate effective virtual meetings within their own organization. This is not a professional facilitation skills training. Rather, this course is for senior leaders, supervisors, team leads, project managers, and really any staff member who wants to help make your organization's virtual meetings more effective. There are two specific objectives we'll address in this course. First, we'll review the role and responsibilities of a facilitator before, during, and after the virtual meeting. And second, we'll provide tips on simple techniques and use of technology to facilitate simple virtual meetings effectively. We'll frame the application of the tools and techniques around the most common types of basic meetings, a one-hour staff meeting, a two-hour all-hands, a weekly tag-up, etc. And when it comes to using various virtual meeting platforms and tech tools, we've provided links to various how-tos in the resource section at the end of the workbook. Before we even get into your role and responsibilities as a facilitator, let's touch briefly on the essential tools you'll need to do a great job in the virtual context. First and foremost, you've got to have good internet connection. You won't be able to facilitate effectively if you're the one dropping in and out of the meeting. If your wireless signal is unsteady, then try to plug directly into the network to ensure consistency and strong connection. Make sure you turn off other applications and free up as much bandwidth as possible during the meeting. In order to facilitate, you obviously need a camera. There's no need to overcomplicate things. Whatever camera you have on your laptop or computer is probably fine to start. The key point is this. Don't just leave your camera sitting on the desk pointing up at your face. This means your colleagues will be looking right up your nose and get a great view of the ceiling above you. You want to have your camera at eye level. This means putting your laptop or computer up high enough so you're looking directly into the lens. You can use a sturdy stack of books, a cardboard box, or go ahead and purchase an inexpensive adjustable base like this super handy collapsible platform. It costs about $40 and it's a great investment. Make sure you position yourself at the right distance from your camera so others can see your full face and shoulders and even your hands when you're speaking, which is greatly helpful when it comes to personalizing communication. A virtual background can come in handy if you don't have a decent backdrop, but don't use something distracting or your colleagues will be checking out your virtual background instead of listening to what's going on in the meeting. Of course, use those fun virtual backgrounds for birthday parties, virtual happy hours, or other team building events, but that's a different topic. Choose a simple virtual background that makes you look professional. Another critical tool is lighting. Just a few basic do's and don'ts. Don't have a bright light directly behind you, a window or a lamp or a skylight. That'll mean your colleagues see your silhouette rather than seeing your face, which is great if you're in a witness protection program, but not if you're trying to facilitate a discussion. And don't put a spotlight directly on your face with nothing but darkness behind you. That's another sure way to creep out your colleagues. <laughs> Do ensure that there's sufficient lighting on your face while your background is appropriately lit. You can simply put yourself in front of a window if there's natural light or use a desk lamp. You can upgrade to a relatively inexpensive ring light that includes a dimmer switch to adjust the brightness level for daytime, evening, or night. When it comes to sound, chances are whatever microphone is in your computer is probably fine, 
Ask a colleague for feedback to let you know how it sounds. If it's not good, try a headset. This can help give greater clarity to your voice and also greatly diminishes background noise, which is another key point. Make sure you are in as quiet an environment as possible. And if there is background noise, which of course could happen unexpectedly, be ready to use the mute function so others don't have to hear the banging or barking or crying or whatever's going on around you. There's a self-assessment activity on page four in the workbook where you can assess your current comfort level as you get ready to learn more about facilitating virtual meetings. How do you feel about managing the technology? Do you hate it or love it? Are you comfortable being on camera or mortified looking at yourself the entire time during a virtual meeting? Do you have any experience guiding others or are you new to virtual facilitation? And do you have the basic tools you need to do a great job? At the end of the workbook on page 20, there's a set of links for the tools we've mentioned. Go ahead and get what you need. All right, ready to facilitate? Let's get started.